The Steelers have released their unofficial depth chart, their first one of the season in preparation for that week one preseason matchup versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I've got the takeaways for you guys. I got six of them to share with you here in just a second. But first, go ahead and click that subscribe button and join our family here at Steelers Talk because we're going to be having a watch party this Friday for that first preseason game. It's going to be at or it's going to be in Tampa Bay, of course, but if you want to uh, kick it with your fellow Steelers fans, uh, we're going to be having a live watch party. It starts at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so make sure you click that subscribe button and turn on your notifications because we're doing watch parties for every preseason game and every single regular season game as well this year. So if you want to kick it with your boys and your gals, uh, your fellow Yenzers during Sundays this year, go ahead and click that subscribe button right now. Now let's start with my takeaways. My first takeaway is that Kendrick Green, the new star of Steelers training camp, is not listed at fullback despite taking reps there at practice this weekend. And listen, Kendrick Green, somebody that's a backup center, somebody that's undeniably a bust, a former third-round pick, somebody that was expected to become a starter along the offensive line for this team by now. Hasn't happened yet. He's listed as the backup center. And throughout practice over the weekend, he was playing a lot of fullback and even some tight end. And he was he was like bull rushing people. He was, he was trucking people. And he's become a bona fide fan favorite now because of that. And I bet that this guy is going to get a carry at some point on Friday. He's doing too much work with the running backs at the fullback position here uh, to not have it mean something for the preseason, in my opinion. I think that they're considering keeping Kendrick Green on the roster, not only because he's offensive line depth at the center position, but also he could come in and kind of be like a fridge type of player at the fullback position, just truck people at the goal line and in those short area situations because this is a very, very big man. And he's athletic enough to play fullback, in my opinion. So this might actually work out for Kendrick. But let me know what you guys think. What's going to happen this Friday. Will Kendrick Green get a carry for the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Give me a yes or no down there in the comment section. This is going to be the pin comment on today's show. So YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. Take advantage of that time by giving me a yes or by giving me a no. Then my second takeaway from this depth chart release is that Connor Hayward is officially a fullback. He is officially listed as the only fullback on the depth chart. He's also listed as the third string tight end. And I just think that when you got a guy like Connor Hayward, you got to use him in as many ways as humanly possible. You use him as a tight end, you use him as a fullback, even use him as a true running back in the shotgun sometimes. We've seen that at practice over the last week or so as well. And in my opinion, I think where Kendrick Green could be the perfect thunder uh, fullback, where he's running people over at his size and his athleticism, I think Connor Hayward is the perfect lightning to Kendrick Green's thunder, where Hayward can be a perfect receiving option at the fullback position. He's definitely big enough and a good enough blocker to play at the fullback position, and he's a good enough receiver to really be a weapon in this position as well. So it's encouraging to know that Matt Canada, Mike Tomlin, they're listing Connor Hayward as a fullback right now because I think you got to get him on the field as much as you can because he's lighting it up at Steelers practice right now. And then number three on my list here is that Hakeem Butler is definitely on the bubble to make the final roster. This is what the Steelers wide receiver depth chart looks like right now. Of course, you got Deontay Johnson, George Pickens, and Allen Robinson as your starters. Calvin Austin III is listed as the backup slot receiver right now. And then when it comes to the outside receivers, Miles Boykin and Hakeem Butler are listed above Cody White. Now, I think that with the depth along this wide receiver room, I think that the Steelers will likely carry six wide receivers this year, but of course that means Boykin, Butler, or White has to end up not making the roster, and I think that Butler is definitely making headway, okay? Like Cody White, somebody that played on the practice squad a lot last year, uh, somebody that has experience in this offense, and Hakeem Butler's coming in kind of new, you know, but he's making some splash plays in practice. He's been on and off throughout training camp to this point, but it seems like he's impressing Steelers coaches and he's working his way up the depth chart already. Now, if you could have, if you have to pick one of these guys, one of these wide receivers that you have to cut, because I think that you have to cut one of them. I don't think you're going to be carrying uh, seven wide receivers on the 53-man roster this year, so 
Do me a favor right now. Get in the comments section and pick one of these wide receivers to cut. Give me an HB if you're cutting Hakeem Butler, an MB if you're cutting Miles Boykin, or if you're cutting Cody White. Go ahead and give me a CW down there in the comments section. Then my fourth takeaway here, Chandon Sullivan, the slot cornerback, is still in the driver's seat to be the starting dime corner for the Steelers this year. Of course, we've had a bunch of different players play this position, but Chandon is still in the driver's seat, at least with the first uh, depth chart that came out this week. And right now, of course, we know that Elijah Riley is making a ton of plays in the slot right now, and he's really challenging uh, Chandon for that starting slot corner position. It's one of the position battles I'm keeping my eye on throughout Steelers training camp right now because Riley is somebody that's consistently around the football. He's making plays, and Sullivan's kind of had a quiet camp to this point, so I'm not going to say at this point in the process that it would surprise me if Riley ends up taking that, that starting position by week one. Uh, when, the, when the Steelers play the 49ers in week one this year. Now, I got a couple more takeaways to share with you guys here in just a second. But first, check out our friends at Fanatics. And if you need more, some more black and gold in your closet for this season, we got a great, awesome pair of T-shirts for you guys uh, to get on their website right now. Go to chatsports.com slash Steelers Combo. You get that awesome short sleeve black t-shirt with the Steelers helmet. And then for these hotter months, you know, August is here, right? It's super hot. I really like wearing long sleeves. I think white is a lot more forgiving than, say, a black long sleeve. So uh, that's included in the deal as well. So if you want to get some more black and gold in your closet today, go to chatsports.com slash Steelers Combo. If you use that link, Fanatics will know that we sent you. Then another thing that kind of surprised me a little bit on this initial depth chart is that Nick Kwiatkowski is on the bottom of the linebacker depth chart, and we don't even have enough room for him on our graphic here. If you take a look at this depth chart, we got Cole Holcomb and Landon Roberts at number one and number two right now. And you got Kawan Alexander and Mark Robinson as your backups. And then Tanner Muse and Chappelle Russell are both listed above Nick Kwiatkowski on this list, which tells me that, you know, he's not performing super well at training camp right now, and he's probably been a training camp loser. Now, I know those are, there's those of you out there, shout out Robert Sadler, if you're watching this, that love Nick Kwiatkowski, that think that he's, he's going to make the final 53 and he's going to get on the field. But based on this depth chart right now, especially because Quan Alexander is already up there uh, as the first backup option, just signed a couple of, like, just days ago, I think that Kwiatkowski is probably falling down the order right now, and he could be a surprise cut candidate heading towards the end of the preseason. And then my final takeaway here is that rookie Keanu Benton is starting to fall behind. I kind of assumed going into training camp that he would be the starting nose tackle heading into the year, and that's still technically possible, but this depth chart is abundantly clear. He's going to have to prove his worth here because he's still got Montrevious Adams and Braden Fahoku listed above him at the nose tackle position at this point. And the things that I'm hearing about Benton right now is that he's an athletic freak. He's somebody that's got a ton of potential, but he still needs to put things together. Similar to Darnell Washington on the offensive side of the ball where you, you see the physical tools, you see the flashes, uh, but he's kind of lower down the depth chart because he's just not quite grasping the NFL game at this point. Keanu Benton is kind of that for the Steelers this year on the defensive side of the ball. Still a big believer in Benton's future with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I think that throughout training camp, throughout the preseason, he could move up this depth chart 100%. But right now, Montrevious Adams, it really seems like the Steelers brass really likes this guy. Played a lot last year. Didn't grade all that well. Didn't get a sack. Only one tackle for loss. Not a huge impact player last year. And a lot of people wanted the Steelers to cut him this offseason, but obviously Mike Tomlin and Terrell Austin see something in this young man to keep him at that first position on the depth chart. And then you got Braden Fahoku that's really been impressive to this point in training camp. He has really impressed me personally with his ability to eat up space at the nose tackle position and defend the run, which is the primary function of a nose tackle. And honestly, it wouldn't surprise me whatsoever if Fahoku is the starting nose tackle for the black and gold for that week one matchup against the 49ers. But now let me know what you guys think. Who is the best nose tackle on the Steelers roster right now? Is it Montrevious Adams? Give me an MA. Is it the new guy, Braden Fahoku? Give me a BF. Or if you think it's the rookie, the athletic rookie out of Wisconsin, Keanu Benson, give me a KB down there in the comments section. 
Now, before I go here, I got some injury updates to kind of go over, some roster updates to go over with y'all, uh, starting with Minka Fitzpatrick. He's back. He's a full go. He was back during team period uh, this weekend, and it's really great to have Mink back. I, I, I hope that he's in a good space mentally to really get prepared for this season because it's such a big year for this franchise. And uh, based on what I'm hearing, based on what, what he's doing in camp, he's looking really, really good. He's stayed in shape, and he is absolutely locked in to have yet another All-Pro season here in 2023. So that's great news. Then some more great news here, and also at the safety position, DeMonte Casey he has been dealing with a leg injury here over about the last week, week and a half or so, and now he's getting closer to return. He was running, he was jogging uh, at practice on Sunday, so that's telling me he's getting really close to return, and it wouldn't shock me if he ends up playing this Friday in, in, this, in this week's game against the Buccaneers. And then also Nick Herbig, somebody that's really been a star in camp, looking like a true steal they're in the fourth round for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's consistently getting to the quarterback. He's dealing with a hip flexor issue. We still have to see how kind of serious that is. I don't think it's overly serious because the Steelers haven't designated him for anything. They're not bringing any edge rushers or outside linebackers in for tryouts or anything like that. So I think Herbig will probably be out maybe a couple more days. It'll be interesting to see if he's able to play this Friday against the Bucs. Now that'll be it for today's show, guys. Really do appreciate all the support. Make sure you click that subscribe button for me uh, if you haven't already. Again, we're going to be having that live watch party on Friday. It's going to be a bunch of fun. We got the Steelers Talk live show on Wednesday. And of course, we got the daily content here on the channel. So if you want to become an expert on the 2023 Pittsburgh Steelers, this is the place for you. Click that subscribe button for me right now.